by six. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Homesteading Off The Grid. The most popular homesteading channel on the internet that has absolutely nothing to do with homesteading. So, y'all heard any good jokes lately? How about a Bigfoot Sasquatch story? Would you like to hear one of those? It's been a while. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna read you one today. True story submitted by one of our channel viewers, uh, Christina Schoenfeld. Uh, this is her story and Nicholas' story, Christina and Nicholas Schoenfeld. I'm probably mispronouncing that name. Here's how it's spelled. This story is one of many stories featured in Bigfoot Sasquatch Files Volume 15, which is now available in print and Kindle on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description box below. Tons of stories being submitted for these Bigfoot Sasquatch volumes uh, like this one. Going to get to in a second. If you have one, feel free to submit it to the channel here. The email address is crazylake at mail.com. And remember, we also have the True Hauntings series going as well. So if you have any experiences with paranormal activity, supernatural, etc., UFOs, aliens, abductions, anything cryptid related, submit it to the channel. And we'll uh, consider it for future publication and reading on the, on the channel here. Now, make sure to watch for him, her, it, or they in the background, and you might hear a light drizzle. That's not rain. Uh, it's snow. It's just now beginning to snow. It was supposed to snow two hours ago, so I put off coming up here to do this, and I thought, ah, it's not going to snow. So here, once again, my magic trick. I can control the weather by coming outside to do something and cause precipitation. All right, let's get to it. Uh, Christina. And Nicholas Schoenfeld submitted this story. They titled it Our Bigfoot Story in the email headline there, heading. Uh, this happened in the woods of Rogers, Arkansas by Beaver Lake. My husband had an encounter with a Bigfoot in Avoca, Arkansas about 10 to 15 years ago. He and I were staying at my old childhood home while waiting for a house we were moving into to be finished. One night, we were having a small disagreement, and rather than stay in the house, he chose to go outside and sit in my dad's old broken-down pickup truck. You see, my dad owned 18 acres on one side of the road and two acres on the other side of the road. The side that had the two acres on it was equipped with an old milk barn and a very old garage. On the side of the road that had the 18 acres on it, there was our house, a couple of live springs, a cave, and a forest made up of more dense woods all behind the house. We were on the left side of the road and we were the last house on the dirt road before Beaver Lake and the rest of the land was owned by the Corps of Engineers. Yep, keep your eyes on it. This particular night, there was a storm on the horizon. You could smell the rain coming in the air and you could see the heat lightning, which seemed miles and miles away. Well, my husband ended up sitting in the truck until he eventually fell asleep on the front seat. And according to him, he doesn't know how long he had been asleep. He thinks a few hours. I wondered where he had gone, but just figured I would leave him alone until he decided to come back in. I went on about my business and eventually went to our bedroom and laid down, when all of a sudden my husband came running in, literally breathless. I asked him what was wrong, what happened, over and over. Nick, what is wrong? When he finally caught his breath, he was shaking, his hands and his entire body. He eventually calmed down enough to tell me what it, he had encountered. He said he had been asleep when suddenly a loud noise awakened him. He sat up in the seat, motionless and scared to death because he said what he heard next scared the life out of him. He could hear grunts and a strange type of growl, but it was the elongated gait this creature had and the force of how heavy his steps were that froze Nick right where he sat. He said, he said for a minute he thought maybe it was a deer, but then realized deer don't put that much weight down when stepping. He then tried to convince himself that maybe it was a black bear, since Beaver Lake was known for many black bears. But the longer he listened, the closer this animal or creature got to him, the more and more he decided it had to be a Bigfoot. He said the stride it had was enormous. He could hear leaves, twigs, branches being broken under this thing's feet as it took long, very long strides. You see, my dad had a huge 100 plus year old oak tree fall down during a previous storm. And rather than it falling on his house, it fell sideways across the fence that separated my dad's property from the next neighbor's property. When that tree fell, it took that whole section of the fence down 
and in the fence there were those old red plastic slats that ran through the fence holes used kind of as a privacy feature well when this creature got to the spot where the huge tree landed and took out the fence he said there was a long silent pause as if he was trying to figure out if it was going to try and crawl under the down tree over the down tree or try to go around the tree nick still frozen in fear said he couldn't move that's how scared he was then all of a sudden he heard it leap over this tree the tree was so large it was almost six feet tall to the spot where you could pull yourself up onto the tree my husband sat and continued to listen the enormous creature began again to make his long strides up the ditch beside the fence on the opposite side nick was sitting on as it drew closer and closer, making its way toward being directly beside where Nick was sitting in my dad's truck, it suddenly ran into something that Nick described as steel. He said it ran straight into something steel or thick metal behind the fence. I asked him what's metal or steel behind the fence out there. He responded with, I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. I told him I had no clue and told him to go on with the story. He said he waited for it to scream out in a horrendous fashion, but there was no sound. I said, is that when you got out of the truck and came in here? And his response was, hell no. I was still frozen with fright. He said it stood there for what seemed like half an hour. Nick was so scared, he figured it could smell his fear through the window of the truck. He tried to roll up the window, but with no luck, as it remained jammed most of the way down. He said the next thing he knew, he could hear the creature starting to pull itself up out of the ditch and up onto the property on the other side as it balanced itself. <clears throat> Nick still sat scared to death as it continued to take enormous steps up over the hill and headed towards our neighbor's house, which was at least a quarter of a mile down the road, but by way of the woods, not the dirt road. Suddenly, the lightning and thunder and storm began, and I told Nick if there were any footprints, they would be gone by morning from the tremendous downpour we were listening to outside. <clears throat> How ironic. We're having a tremendous downpour of sleet here now. He told me he was never going outside at dark there anymore, and he was as white as a ghost still as he said this. We headed off to bed, and I laid there half the night thinking, oh my God, I wish he would have had a camera with him or a cell phone. I'm sure Nick didn't get any sleep that night because I know I didn't. All kinds of visions kept running through my head. My dad thought we were both nuts and that we were overreacting and totally didn't believe a word of the story. The next morning, we went outside, and Nick showed me the tree. He pulled himself up onto the tree that had fallen and crushed my father's fence and told me to give him my hands so he could pull me up on top of this large, more than 100-year-old tree, too. Once on top, I said, holy crap, this is over six feet tall. Again, this was the spot where he said the creature had hurtled over the tree like it was nothing. We walked across the tree to the ditch. Nick jumped down into the ditch, then helped me down. We were on a hunt for what the creature had hit that was steel or some other kind of metal. We went through briars and thickets and saw all kinds of twigs and limbs broken as if the creature had broken them while walking down the ditch. Then, after another few minutes, we got to what the steel metal sound was that my husband had heard the night before, and I literally almost pissed myself. It was an old pipe that was running out of the mountain that appeared to be one that probably, in the old days, would have filtered water out of the mountain, but there was something terrifying about it now. It had, in fact, been bent completely in half. I mean, as, it, as in it once ran straight out of the hillside, and now it was in the shape of an L. I said, oh my God, do you realize what strength it took for something to run into it in the dark and bend it completely in half? My husband turned and looked at me and said, yes, an effing Bigfoot. He then said, now do you believe me? I said, yes, I believe you because look. And as I was answering him, I said, look, and pointed up on the hillside where the creature had walked off up the hill. There, attached to the trees and briars and brambles, were pieces of fur slash hair. I grabbed it with a plastic glove and, and I had brought, that I had brought with me, and it was dry and brittle and very nasty. It was mostly reddish brown with a few strands of black and brownish colors as well. This was fur that came from the creature. We took it back inside, went in and placed it in a sandwich baggie, and over the next few days, me and Nick discussed what we would end up doing with the fur slash hair. We eventually decided no one would ever believe us, and I actually don't know whatever happened to the sample I had collected. One day it was there, and the next it was gone. I assume my dad threw it away to save us and him the embarrassment 
that it would have caused if we'd have turned it over to someone. But who was I going to give it to and trust it with? My dad passed away almost four years ago and the house sold and then was foreclosed on eight months later. It has now sat there empty and vandalized as well as all the windows have been broken. Uh, this particular day, Ha! Ah, there's the home. House has been sitting there vandalized. The windows have been broken uh, out of it. And things have been stolen from inside, like the fireplace, cook stove, etc. I always heard strange sounds at night when I grew up there as a child, like rocks hitting our house and especially the roof. But never in my wildest dreams did I think it was a Bigfoot. But I believe everything my husband told me and what I saw with my own eyes. I will never doubt anyone's Bigfoot story again. This took place approximately be between 2004 and 2006. I'm estimating based on how old my kids were at the time. Thank you for listening to my husband's story. He and I will not even get out of the car in that area at night ever again. Christina and Nicholas Schoenfeld. So folks, there you have it. True eyewitness story of Bigfoot Sasquatch sighting, Bigfoot Sasquatch activity from down in Arkansas. Again, if you have a story of your own, feel free to submit it to the channel. The email address is crazylake at mail.com. Thanks for being here. Keep coming back. We'll have more stories and all kinds of just weird stuff, whatever I'm in the mood to do. Um, again, that's a featured story along with dozens and dozens of others that are part of Bigfoot Sasquatch Files Volume 15, available on Amazon or print and Kindle. Feel free to support the channel by way of giving a super chat below. And as always, the biggest way in which you can support this channel is by simply showing up and watching our videos. See you for more next time. Huh. Now that I'm finished, it's stopping. <laughs>